Here on BBC Two First, Open Space. Tonight's programme was made by the Glossop Clean Air Campaign, a group of local people in Derbyshire who have been fighting to rid their town of industrial pollution. damages our health. You can smell the gas and you can actually taste it. It's damaging our property and our environment. We sometimes find that the gas comes down over us while we're at school. This is not just smoke. This is sulphur dioxide, a poisonous gas it is being pumped into the air over the Peak District town of Glossop, a massive eight tons a day, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Ferro Alloys and Metals Limited have polluted Glossop throughout the half a century. After years of complaint, a solution was claimed to be found. In 1977, temporary planning consent was granted through a 300 foot chimney on the understanding that a way should be found to remove the pollution at source. This has not been done and planning consent has not been renewed. The company has appealed to the Department of Environment and the public inquiry begins in Glossop on Tuesday. Do we want the chimney to stay? No! Pardon? No! We want the pollution stopped now. I've heard a lot about the effects of the chimney plume on, on people, but uh, it was vividly brought home to me a couple of weeks ago when I went out running one morning. It was a lovely clear day, there was a blue sky, there was no wind or very little breeze. And I was running up the hill and all of a sudden, back of my throat just went dry, there was a horrible taste, a horrible smell, and I thought I'd run into somebody's fire, but it was too early in the morning. I looked round and the chimney plume was coming straight at me in a gentle breeze and it was just settling on the hill. And it was a really awful feeling, and I don't know about you, but I find it very difficult holding my breath and running uphill. This video was taken by a friend of mine. My house is down here, in about this corner, and you can see that the plume from the chimney, the smoke, is just coming up. It's swirling around, and it's falling down. And I was breathing this in all the time. You could taste it in your mouth, you could taste it in your nose. It choked you, made you gag on it. It was absolutely revolting, disgusting, horrid. If anything like this was dropping on the city of London, the city gents down there would have a baby. They'd have it shut down within the hour. Ooh, the lads in the House of Commons, ooh, they wouldn't stand it for five minutes. And if it dropped on Downing Street, blimey, I don't know what would happen. They'd have them in the tower. <laughs> for environment, the inquiry. Now, at the end of it all, can we trust this man? <laughs> what annoys you about the chimney? Well, for a start, it cost me £150 when, the, when Glossop went into a smoke-free zone. And just look, that chimney's there, puttering away all the time. Why did I have to find the money when I could ill afford it? And they won't find the money to clean that up. The windows, doors, everything has to be kept closed, even on the hot summer's day. To take things into their own hands, how much longer are we prepared to sit here and see our health be damaged? I want to see this public inquiry say that the chimney has got to go. We don't want a fudge. The people of this town have the right to, to breathe clean air. Not in five years' time, not in ten years' time, but now. How does the chimney attack the children at the school? Well, the main concern that we have is that on a windy day, with the winds blowing in this direction, the fumes come down, the children complain of feeling sick, giddy, sore throats. We bring the children out here to exercise and take in larger quantities of air than they're normally taking, and we're forcing them to take in this well, polluted atmosphere. 
Well, the chimney itself annoys me very much because uh, I, I actually I would move out of the area, but my husband's um, Glossop born and bred, so I mean, why should we move out of the area? Um, our freedom of choice is impinged, I feel. Everybody, in my opinion, has the right to breathe in clean air, but in Glossop we, we uh, don't have that right. It billows out this sulphur dioxide and we're forced to breathe it in. Short of wearing a gas mask, we have no choice at all. The substances coming out of the chimney are sulphur dioxide, sulphur trioxide, molybdic oxide, selenium, arsenic. Ferroalloys roast molybdenum sulphide and convert it into molybdic oxide, which is used to make ferroalloys. And these alloys of iron are then used in making high temperature steels. This is a kind of burning process, and as a result of this roasting, the sulphur dioxide goes straight up the chimney. Now sulphur dioxide is a noxious and poisonous gas. The concentration of sulphur dioxide is 20,000 parts per million which comes out of the chimney. That's the most concentrated in the United Kingdom and it's 20 times more concentrated than comes out of a power station chimney. I've just been looking through your figures. I was quite appalled to know the number of times at which you exceed 600 micrograms per meter cubed of sulfur dioxide because this is the exact level at which in West Germany they call smog alert, which basically means that a number of things are restricted. Schools stop physical education. So at the level at which Germany is calling a smog alert, it's the exact level at which you're not being told anything whatsoever about the fact that you're exceeding that limit. We're making a film with the community programme unit of the BBC about the chimney and I'm ringing to ask you to take part in, in it to give your company's point of view. Would you be interested in taking part? Uh, I very much doubt it. I would have to get um, OKs from uh, up above me anyway. Yes. Uh, it's not for me to do things like that off my own bat. No, I quite understand. Would you like me to phone you back later on today, say, and see if you've had any response? Hello, Mr. Briley. Yes. Hi. Did you get any response? Uh, y yes. Uh, no, I don't want to appear in the film. You sure now? Yeah. Yes. There's nothing I can... I mean, we've recorded these conversations. There's nothing I can say to make you change your mind. You know, do you want to make a statement on the phone or anything like that? Uh, no, no. No. Okay, then. Right. Right, thanks very much Thank for talking you. to you. Thanks. Bye-bye now. Anxieties about the effect of sulphur dioxide pollution led in 1952 to the Clean Air Act. Yet here in Glossop in 1988 we are still suffering the effects of industrial sulphur dioxide. So what does sulphur dioxide do? It irritates the eyes, it irritates the nose, it irritates the linings of the airways and it causes you to cough and to wheeze. Now we know that if you get repeated irritations, you get infections such as sinusitis or in children, ear infections. And of course, very many more people getting symptoms of wheeziness and asthma. So how does the chimney affect you? Well, I think it's seriously affected my health. Since the tall chimney was built 10 years ago, I've had recurring attacks of sinusitis. And when I don't have sinusitis, I have a chronic catarrh condition. Um, the rest of my family also suffer from this catarrh condition as well. I've noticed in the last 12 months working at Glossop School as a school matron, eczema's on the increase in Glossop, and I think something should be done about it. Uh, I did without asthma for 30 years, and I, I come to live in Glossop, and I start with asthma again. So it really is it's very bad. The other night, uh, Tuesday in fact, I had to get up at 2 o'clock and have a spray, at 4 o'clock and have a spray, I didn't have to look out of the window, but when I went down in the morning, breakfast time, there it was, the plume coming straight over towards us. It affects my daughter, yeah. mainly. Um, uh -huh. She's five. She has asthma, and there's no history of asthma in the family. She is extremely ill with it. Yeah. It's caused by the chimney pollution, yeah. I think, because when we do leave Gossip, the symptoms just clear up.
There are about 2,000 people suffering from asthma in Glossop whose symptoms are made worse by the presence of high levels of sulfur dioxide. And that isn't to mention the people with other chest diseases or heart failure who struggle to breathe in clean air, never mind when sulfur dioxide is added. And if that happens, it simply has a crippling effect. I go down to Glossop, just breathing normally and walking normally. Now after a few minutes, when I've been breathing in the chimney, my chest gradually begins to tighten up. It gets tighter and tighter, till eventually I can hardly walk at all. I literally come to a stop. It just completely tightens it up. I can't get any breath in at all. You have heard how many people smell and taste the gas, a concentration we know can be harmful. That is why we have so many people suffering from sinusitis. Other people whose asthma left them as a child, finding it recur in Glossop. And children getting asthma in families where they never had a history of it before. And the most notable feature is that of these symptoms and the people who get infection after infection after infection, if they leave Glossop, their symptoms go. And if they return to Glossop, the symptoms come back. I've come 500 miles to take part in this film because I feel very strongly that Claire and myself were driven to leave our home because of the very high air pollution caused by the Glossop chimney. The doctor eventually became so concerned about Claire's rapidly deteriorating condition, he sent her to a consultant at the local hospital. When he'd finished examining her, he asked where we lived, and when I told him it was Glossop, he said, not another child from that town, I've seen too many like this. Either you need to move to an area where there's clearer air, if she stays here, we shall have to operate, because I'm concerned that her ears are being severely damaged. I took Claire back to see her local doctor, and he took one look at her and said, dramatic. He couldn't believe the change in her from a, a, a pale, thin, sickly child to the uh, healthy, glowing, tanned, very grown-up little girl that she has now become. I feel that Claire was one of the lucky ones because at least she was able to escape. I know that there are, well, probably hundreds of children in Glossop who, who are badly affected and they can't escape. They're trapped. If you have emissions into the air that turning cars blue that are corroding stonework and metalwork even if children aren't showing direct symptoms you have to ask yourself if it's doing that what is it doing to them inside but you don't have to be ill to get problems in Glossop the concentrations are such that you can be a normal healthy individual jogging and you have to stop because of coughing and wheezing when you enter the gas or you can be people playing cricket when smog stops play. Sulfur dioxide causes acid rain. This is a global problem which recognizes no boundaries. The present generation of power stations can send the acid hundreds of miles. For many years, we have dumped sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. However, it is not so widely known that it is also a local problem. The moors surrounding Glossop have been subjected to acid rain since the last century, and still it goes on. Well, the pupils of Glossop School have been involved in a test run by Manchester Polytechnic and the test involves going up onto the roof and taking a sample of the rainwater and bringing it down into a lab and testing it with a very sensitive pH paper. So what were the results of this test? Well, we found out that glossic rainwater was the most acidic in the high peak and the average for all the rain tests that we did was 4.2 which is 20 times as acidic as clean rain. We had tests as low as pH 3, which is very acidic, and tests of 3.5 4 were fairly common. Would you like to see the chimney moved? Well, I don't think moving it would be a solution to the problem. It would be doing what the firm tried to do, which is push the pollution on somebody else. I think it should be dealt with at source, and the pollution should be removed. Is there any way that we can try and make sure that we don't inflict our suffering on other communities? Thank you. 
In my country, we have a tremendous amount of lakes, about 85,000, if someone have counted them correctly. Something like 15,000 of those lakes are dead or dying. They are beautiful lakes, mostly, even when they are dead, but they are dead. No fish, no other biological life. We try to stave off the worst developments by liming them. And soon we have to go to the White Cliffs of Dover to get new lime in order to stave off what we get from Britain. Remissions from Britain are deposited in Sweden, and the depositions that have their source in Britain is about a third of the ones that we emit ourselves. A third of it. It's quite a lot. States have the responsibility to ensure that activities within their jurisdiction or control do not cause damage to the environment of other states. And that's why I'm all for the aim that the campaign for clean air in this city is running. Thank you very much. Acid rain is caused because sulfur dioxide is very soluble in water. When the raindrops fall through the chimney plume, they absorb the sulfur dioxide and they become acidic. These acidic drops fall down on the buildings around the plant and will dissolve any lime elements which are present in the bricks and mortar. This is why the houses in Glossop are dissolving away. Um, all the acid rain from the chimney has caused all that uh, yellow staining there. Uh -huh. In actual fact, my husband's uh, grandfather was a builder and he always said that the roofs in Glossop would wear out far more quickly because of it. And it just makes you think, you know, who's going to foot the bill for these extra roof repairs? Mrs Goddard has to pay, and why should she? In this country, the policy is that the polluter pays. But in Glossop, they are not paying for the effects of their pollution. To quote a former minister, the company responsible to creating the pollution should be responsible to controlling it. If you think of losses to the timber trade, how much does the NHS pay to look after all the lung diseases we get? How much do we pay for renovation of historical buildings or for everyday materials that are corroded faster? In those simple terms, the cost of pollution looks rather small in terms of the economic costs of what acid rain is doing. So I don't believe we have a principle in this country of the polluter pays, but we badly need one. The idea of the tall chimney is to move the pollution such a distance that when it lands, as it invariably does, it is so diluted that you don't notice it. In Glossop, this does not work. The surrounding hills are about 600 feet above the chimney top, and with the prevailing wind blowing in from the only gap in the valley, the plume can only strike the hills. Well, I'd hate to see Glossop become a chapter in a scientific or medical textbook on toxicity. If we were ruminants, then we would certainly suffer from molybdenum poisoning, and thank God we're not ruminants. We've had a problem with molybdenum dust falling onto the grass at the farm for the past 30 years, and this has caused copper deficiencies within the cattle. The symptoms generally associated with copper deficiency is uh, an unthriftiness in the animals. Their coats tend to be rough and, and reddened. Also, there is poor growth rates, uh, and in the milking herd, the milk yields are depressed somewhat. And of course, they get diarrhea. We inject them with a copper compound. It's quite a costly item. And with a herd of ours of 130, it amounts to about £250 a year. I think the Naden brothers are right to be concerned about the excessive amount of molybdenum that's on the pasture. I think the whole of Lossop Dale is affected to a, a lesser or greater extent. It would be better for the cattle and sheep in, in the Dale if the chimney didn't pollute. We don't know, of course, how long the molybdenum that's already there in the soil will take to clear itself. It could be like the Chernobyl disaster, and it could take years. I would like to ask Lars, what would be done with such a plant in Sweden? My own guess from what I know here, it would be shut down immediately. Did you know that the emissions from that factory are actually legal? No, I didn't. <laughs> they are. I'm what, a bit shocked yeah. at that. What do you think about that? 
Well, I think it's diabolical. Um, I think the people who make those sort of decisions ought to come and live in Gloucester because I'm sure they'd alter them straight away. Well, I found this out yesterday. It surprised me. Yeah, I believe it's 10 tonnes of sulphur dioxide per day which can be emitted from such a chimney. But I think we must remember here that uh, it was legal 100 years ago to put children up chimneys to sweep them, resulting in the death of many of these children. It was also legal not many decades ago to allow dyestuff workers in Manchester to uh, shovel around and work in azo dyes. Subsequently, a lot of these people have died of bladder cancer. So what is legal may not be right. And uh, if this is, is the law, as you say, it certainly needs changing. The pollution laws in this country are a scandal. It is up to the local people to prove that an emission is harmful, not for the polluter to prove that it is safe. Our local councils routinely measure 24-hour sulphur dioxide levels. In Glossop, they are within the EEC limits because these regulations are geared to the 24-hour average. When the plume descends, it will probably miss the monitor altogether. Even if it scores a direct hit, the sudden rise in concentration is lost in the 24-hour average. It was only when the council bought a new monitor capable of recording these peaks that the scientists were able to prove what local people had been telling them all along. The levels are too high. What's it like dealing with the company? Uh, very difficult. So if you ring them up, they just ignore you. The only way we found that we could get to talk to their managing director was by actually phoning every line that we could on their switchboard and jamming their switchboard. So what do you think about the company's attitude? Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's diabolical. Um, they don't contribute anything to this community except sulfur dioxide in large quantities. Ten years ago, a group of us got together to try and stop a planning application for building a tall chimney. We didn't think the tall chimney would, uh, would work. And we've been proved now, after ten years, that the tall chimney does not work. We raised a certain amount of money and we tried to stop them by going to court. Now, of course, uh, at that stage, we run out of money. They send the bailiffs in to my shop uh, to claim all the costs. Uh, it's very disturbing. I mean, there was two other uh, colleagues that was in with it, and it is not a nice thing to uh, be presented with a, a bailiff's order. I think it was a depl deplorable. Uh, they would have been far better presenting the bill, and then we could have paid out, and that would have been an end to it. But, of course, these are big companies work, I'm afraid. The company planned that chimney over a period of years. They, they employed lawyers to represent them. Ordinary individuals have no chance of competing with that at all. The odds are stacked against you as the little person, and it's in favour of business and industry. As a planner, I think I sympathise with local people who have some disquiet about the planning system. It's clear, particularly when you get into a complicated public inquiry, that the advantage lies with those who can afford expert legal and technical advice, which in this case is the company. And the local people have to either find that expert advice and uh, find it in their own spare time, which is difficult. The other reason that I think they are right to have disquiet is that someone who wishes to play the system and carry on doing something perhaps beyond the rules, and it's very, very difficult and complicated to stop them. Enforcement action can take years and years. And there's some evidence that this case of the chimney is starting to drag on for a very long time. We feel that industry cannot be trusted to put the health of the population before profit, as is the case in Glossop. The really annoying thing about this situation is that there is an effective solution. Well, there's been a solution on the cards for a long time, and that is to install a, a cleaning plant at the base of the, the chimney. I think the only solution is either to close the factory down or install cleansing equipment. They could do, but they just do nothing, this company. The locals are absolutely correct. There is a way that this process can be cleaned up and it involves absorbing the noxious sulphur dioxide into a liquid stream. There's a Swiss process which has been installed in Germany on a plant which is exactly the same as ferroalloys. This process is extremely successful. It cleans up 99.8% of the sulphur dioxide. I have been to Goslar and seen this plant and we know that this technology works. It's a good solution and it's good for Glossop's environment.
We bought five pounds worth of shares to gain access to the company reports and the right to speak at their annual general meeting. We know that they have made over 11 million pounds profit since 1977. Some of this money should have been spent to stop the pollution. They say that it's going to cost too much. Um, but, I mean, according to the profits from years past, they could have afforded to clean it up many times over. If they can't, then I feel that funds should be found from government or, or from the EEC to assist them to do it. It's part of industry. I, I don't wish to see anything shut down unnecessarily. But I don't feel that we should be expected to live with, with that. I think the company are blackmailing us when they use the jobs argument. I've been unemployed myself for three years in total. I don't want anybody to lose their job. The threat to jobs comes from the irresponsible actions of the company, not from the campaign to clean this town up. There are industrial parks in Glossop. Perhaps the mere fact the chimney isn't polluting the, the, the valley will encourage more firms to come here and work. Um, the tourist industry must be depressed by the fact that that's there. I feel that Glossop has a tremendous amount of potential for tourism. Unfortunately, this is marred greatly by the chimney because people come here for the countryside and for the Peak District National Park and then ask, what is the chimney doing? And so, well, it's not bowling out smoke, it's putting out something far more serious than smoke, and it tends to discourage them from coming back. And I've got a letter here, actually, from the Department of the Environment that I wrote, and one of the answers that they give, I think, is absolutely astounding. It says, the emissions can spread across the width of the valley, giving an alarming appearance, and wait for it, even though they do not disperse down to ground level. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a letter from the Department of the Environment in reply to my letter to the Minister. And quite frankly, um, it gives you some idea of how much effort we're going to have to put in at this public inquiry because the Wallies in London are still telling us that it doesn't disperse down to ground level. Well, having attended the public meeting with about a thousand people there where they couldn't all fit in the hall where it was called, I think there's no doubt there would be direct action if the chimney wasn't either cleansed or stopped. I don't have any doubt at all. It was a cross-section of people, old, young, incomers, people who've lived in Glossop all their lives, and the feeling was very, very strong. How do we sort out problems like what's happening in Glossop? I think it's important that we say very clearly that we want targets set at the level which will protect our forests, and our fish, keep our rivers non-acid, look after our health and preserve what is basically rather a delicate balance of nature. We have to do something. We, we are really going into a situation which might unbalance the ecosystem in very serious manners. You can look at the forest in certain parts of, let's say, Poland and Czechoslovakia and they are coming up with acidified deserts and that's a terrible example to go and look at because it gives you a second thought of the way we are behaving ourselves. This is a serious matter and hopefully this will become one of the major issues of world politics instead of just killing each other. Thank you. The public inquiry will be the last chance for Glossop to claim its right to clean air. We have had enough. Enough pollution, enough excuses. We want Faroe Alloys to clean up their factory. We will not give up without a fight. Happy days are here again. The skies above are clear again. Never sing a song of cheer again. Happy days are here again. All together shout it now. There's no one who can doubt it now. So let's tell the world about it now, happy days are here again, your cares and troubles are gone, there'll be no more from now on, happy days are here again, the skies above are clear again, let us sing the song of cheer again, happy days are here again.